So how many of you guys have been in a scenario where you needed a background or like an abstract background, for instance, and you just needed something really quick to just fill that space, make that campaign for that random, you know, last minute event? Well, let me just show you guys one of my favorite methods and just kind of like what I what I would do. And I think it looks really, really cool. I've definitely, of course, done a tutorial like this in the past. However, I think we kind of switched from like organic shapes to like very geometric shapes. I just want to show you guys how quickly and easily you can do stuff like that. So let's just jump into it. Do not forget to check out the everything pack. If you guys do not know what it is, all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase plus all future products free. OK, so to start this off, I'm in Photoshop. Now, realistically, you probably don't even need Photoshop for this. But you're definitely going to need Illustrator, but like I'm going to use Photoshop. So all all we're doing in Photoshop here is I'm in a document size. It's a 4K document size. It doesn't really matter. We're going to take whatever we do here and move it into Illustrator anyway, and we'll make it a vector pretty quickly. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. And then in this new layer, I'm going to take my brush, right? So I'm going to have a black brush for this instance here. And I'm going to just basically just draw some lines. Now, I want to quickly point out if you guys are new in Photoshop or all that good stuff and your lines don't look as thin or excuse me, as smooth as mine. Let me just show you guys something real quick. Okay. Under Windows. Uh, I believe it's under brush settings. You see this little right here, this little, this word spacing, this should be at 1%. If your brush looks something like that, that's why. Just take the spacing, put it down to one, and then look. Huh? You're welcome. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make a nice, pretty good sized brush, right? Just enough to kind of fill the canvas if I do it three times. So that's my goal here. I'm gonna kind of click once over here. I'll click once in the middle and then once on the right hand side. And this is just three random squiggles. Now, actually, I just realized you, you're probably gonna need Photoshop. I lied. So we're going to go hop into filter. Uh, where is it at? Liquify. And inside Liquify, we want to basically put our size of our brush to about like a thousand or so, a thousand plus. That way it's big enough. Obviously, if your dimensions are a little bit smaller, you're not going to need as big as a brush. So basically something that's covering a good amount of the, the you know, the size of the actual canvas. So I'm going to zoom out for a second. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this first one right here, the forward wrap tool. So W under keyboard for the uh, shortcut. But I can just click. And my goal here is just to kind of move my mouse in a direction and just try to get as many of these squiggles as possible. So you you can take these scribbles and kind of like push things towards the outside to make more giant or bigger like focused shapes. Right? This is a very obvious focus shape that I can make a little bit bigger, right? If I push things out and this is a very nice big shape. So you can kind of do stuff like that. And just these themselves can be these really cool backgrounds, but I'll show you guys two different methods to do this. So this is kind of like what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say this background, it's fun. It's twisted. It's, it's, it works, right? I'm going to press okay. Now, of course you can go in there. You can stay in there for like a good 30 minutes. Just go, go crazy. I would recommend though, if you guys are going to do liquify and you're like someone who's very indecisive, I would make your layer a smart object layer that we can hop into it just in case, you know, I didn't because I'm not like that, but you could be. Regardless though, what I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna take this layer and drag it into my Illustrator. But the goal that we're bringing it into here for is if we go into where it says uh, object, excuse me, not object, window, and then go to Pathfinder or where is it at? Image Trace, if I click on Pathfinder, all my stuff is gonna open up, but if I'm gonna click on Image Trace and all this stuff is gonna pop up, well, all we need is right here is this one, Image Trace, right? So Image Trace is your, your, your champion here. So what we're gonna wanna do is select on our layer, on the image trace uh, table, we're gonna go to presets and we're going to where it says sketched art. This will basically make a, a vector immediately of your picture you just made. So also for, re for reference, if you ever need to, you know, borrow an image on Google, that's like you, you wish it was a vector. I didn't say nothing. What I would recommend you do is drop down the word advanced here and I would lower the, the noise to like one pixel. This will kind of get rid of the edges to be a little bit more jagged I th or to not make them jagged, right? So to get rid of it. And I would also make sure you have selected ignore white. That way, all the white in the background is not there and you won't have to delete it meticulously or like select all the same colors. You can just ignore the white and it'll kind of get rid of it. So now what I have is a nice little cool vector. I'm going to go to where it says object and then expand and then I'm going to press expand while the fill and the object is uh, selected. Press OK. And you can now notice that if I drag it out, it's, of course, transparent. And of course, it is also a vector. So we can scale this up and down infinitely and we can just use it for what we're going to use it for. If I were to take this, I can take some of these individual pieces. Let's say like a nice big piece right here. Go to where it says effect, go to stylize and go to scribble. Now in scribble, you can go through a lot of these different settings to find some really cool stuff. Something like, I don't know, let's just say loose and I can mess around with these settings a little bit. And once you kind of find something you like, you press OK. You can, of course, add the same effect to all the other ones, but I'm just going to leave it like this for a second. So if, let's just say we drag this whole thing back in. 
I'll just control C, control V it into Photoshop, right? Press OK. I can add a nice little gradient map. And then I got myself a fun little effect and a nice little background. I think that, of course, I'm more of a fan of less noise. So, of course, if I left it like this, there's a lot of noise. It's like a very uh, active background. So if I made things bigger, I would say you get a lot less shapes going on and a lot more just kind of like... Uh, a thoughtful placement of the pattern so something like this can work and boom you add your text you add whatever you gotta add and you got your background right that's the first method i've definitely showed in the past but this time let's go back into illustrator so i'm gonna go to where it says uh select no object then go to path and then go to simplify. Now under simplify, you get this really cool thing where you can basically simplify, if you guys don't know what simplify is, you can basically simplify the angle of your, your, your vector you know, anchor points. It'll like lessen the amount or increase the amount if you guys want to. Click the little three dots, it'll bring up the table. And now in here though, I'm gonna select something, of course, preview to see the preview, but I'm gonna select the word convert to straight lines. Now, once I've done this, you can start to see if I zoom in, I can't zoom in while in this mode, but you can kind of zoom in himself. Yo, Jay, can you like zoom in? Thanks. You can kind of see, of course, the edges of this is a little bit jagged, and that's what we're looking for. And if you just take this little second uh, slider here, move this in, you get to start to make some really cool, quick, angular, geometric shapes that, of course, let's say you're going to say like, yo, you can do this with, a, we can do this with like a, like a what? Like a lasso tool? Sure, you got me. But you can do it quickly here, okay? And now, obviously, some of these little points right here where it's really, really thin, it's not going to look good in your design. I would highly recommend to kind of go into it, press minus on your keyboard to bring up the minus anchor point you know pen tool path and kind of delete some of these anchors so that way you don't get this really weird like you know object uh, like or super thin lines it's just not going to work out i can even highlight delete this one with the a selection tool so i'm going to press a on my keyboard highlight something i don't want let's just say it's eh, i think i like this i'll keep it but you would highlight it with a tool right the direct selection tool not the uh what is it called the object selection so direct selection tool even here i can highlight these two things I can show you something really quick. If you guys are not in Illustrator, shift M on your keyboard for the shortcut for the shape builder tool. I'll hold alt on my keyboard to change my, you can see my mouse is changing from plus to minus, right? Hold alt, click, click, and then boom, I can get rid of that. So now I have something like this and now I can take this whole thing. I'm gonna take it into Photoshop. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna take this, right? I have my nice little shape here, add a gradient map. And there you go. You got, you got action. You got, you got spice. You got a background. So of course you might ask yourself, how do you even use this kind of stuff? The idea is to use like nice and bold shapes, maybe like kind of allow the actual pattern to explore itself, have a nice picture on one side. Something like, if I just did something like this, okay, hold on. You know, and boom, and now you got yourself a nice idea. It's literally not that hard. And it's just one of those things that a good background doesn't have to be overthought. Sometimes it just has to be like, you watch a Sesso video, you add a nice little color scheme with a gradient, and call it a day. And honestly, guys, with that, that's that's the end of the video here today. It's super simple. I think it's just one of those things I was gonna gatekeep for a little bit longer, but it's not needed, okay? So it's honestly up to you and how you guys, of course, use it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you can also probably bring this, also add those little, like, little stylized scribble effects to the same exact thing, go back into it. I, you, there's probably so much you can do, and that's the cool part. I wanted to introduce you guys to a different idea, a different concept, and a different walkthrough exploration, how to make some really cool abstract backgrounds. Hopefully I did it. Of course, with that being said, Sesso HQ out. You're going to get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking proud of guys. I don't much love. Peace. Enjoy the everything pack if you guys haven't checked it out over there. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's it. Later.